a very good morning to all the students of class 6 my name is prerna and i'm your english teacher and today from your english book skyline we are going to be reading chapter number 8 tell me how many of you have this habit of complaining about life uh, something like oh my god my friend has this i don't um, and uh, you know my friend has so many toys i don't my friend has so many clothes but i have very less clothes and even the clothes that i have they are they're not uh, you know smart enough for me to wear a few of us have this habit that we compare our life with someone else and sometimes we go so deep into that a feeling of trying to become like someone else that we lose our true identity and only you know just just to be a part of the society just to fit into the society into a society that uh, into that part of the society which we have just created in our mind just to fit into that part of the society we tend to do anything we tend to go to any extent but sometimes trying to become what you are not or trying to show what you are not can land you in a big trouble so let us start reading the story called the diamond necklace about a lady called matilda who was never happy with her life she always kept on complaining about her miseries and how poor she is and she cannot be like her other friends but what is it that she does to show herself as a rich person and how that puts her into a into trouble so let us start reading this chapter this is chapter number 8 and the title of the chapter is the diamond necklace let us start reading this chapter okay Matilda Lozell was one of those pretty charming young ladies born as if through an error of destiny into a family of clerks. She had no money, no hopes, no means of becoming known and getting married to a rich man. She allowed herself to marry a pretty clerk in the office of the Board of Education. She suffered for she felt she was born for all the fine beautiful things of life. She suffered from the poverty of her apartment, the shabby walls, the worn chair and the faded hangings. So introduction about Matilda Lozell, this lady called Matilda Lozell is given here. That this lady though she was very beautiful, very charming. Uh, but she always had this complaint. She always kept on begrudging her life. She always kept on complaining about this thing that, oh my God, I'm born in such a poor family. My life is full of miseries. Look at my house. It is so poor. Look at my life. I am only suffering in my life. So she always kept on complaining about it. She always kept on begrudging about this, that I am not happy in my life. She had a rich friend, a schoolmate at the convent, whom she did not like to visit because it hurt so much when she returned to her own poor apartment. So though she had a very close friend, she did not visit her house because she felt ashamed of the fact that she was economically not as sound as her or financially not sound as her friend. One evening, her husband returned looking excited. In his hand was a large envelope. Here is something for you, he said. She quickly drew out a printed card. So she took out a card from that envelope. The Minister of Public Instruction and Madame George request the honor of Monsieur and Madame Lozell's company Monday evening, January 18th at the minister's residence. So now 
Miss Lozia, Mrs. Lozial and her husband, they were invited at the minister's residence on Monday evening. And Monsieur, it's it's a French word which means Mister. Instead of being delighted as her husband had hoped, she threw the invitation away on the table, murmuring, "What do you suppose I want with that?" But my dear. I thought it would make you happy. You never go out. This is a grand occasion. She looked at him with an irritated eye and said, "What do you suppose I have to wear to such a formal party?" He had no thought and stammered, "Why not the dress you wear when we go to the theater? It seems very pretty to me." he fell silent upset at the sight of his wife's weeping let us see matilda how much would a suitable dress cost something simple i cannot tell exactly but 400 francs ought to cover it she said very well i will give you 400 francs so francs uh, was the form, it's the former currency of france like you have in india you have rupee in us you have dollars so in france it is francs so now what happened matilda's husband had returned home and he showed the invitation uh, that he got invitation to uh, the minister's residence so her husband had hoped that matilda is going to be really happy that wow we are going at uh, such a grand place we going to meet such great and such known people but matilda was still not happy so understand her life condition she is always unhappy so she said that what what am i supposed to wear on this occasion so her concern is not uh, going to the minister's house her concern right now is that what is it that i'm supposed to wear and she tells her husband that a new dress is going to cost me 400 francs and the husband he readily agreed because he loved his wife matilda selflessly the day of the ball approached and madame lozel seemed sad and anxious her husband said to her what is the matter with you and she responded i am upset because i don't have a jewel to adorn myself with so now despite the fact that her husband bought her a dress a new dress there is she has another complaint ready she says now i don't have a matching jewelry what am i supposed to do now then her husband cried out how stupid we are go and ask your friend madam frostier to lend you her jewels so madam frostier is matilda's friend at whose place matilda avoids going the next day she took herself to her friend's house and related her story of distress sadness okay madam frostier took out a large jewel case opened it and said choose my dear among the jewels she saw a superb necklace set with diamonds she asked in a hesitating voice could you lend me this why yes certainly the day of the ball arrived madame lozel was a great success was a great success means that she was ex for a change madame lozel or matilda she was extremely happy because she had a new dress she had a diamond leg necklace so even she could show off herself to be very rich and very elite she was the prettiest of all elegant gracious smiling and full of gaiety extremely happy all the men noticed her asked her name and wished to waltz with her so waltz is a kind of dance she danced with enthusiasm thinking of nothing floating on a cloud of happiness she and her husband left the ball at around 4 o'clock so at 4, 4 a.m they left the uh, ball not 4 p.m at 4 a.m out in the street they found no carriage and began to look for one there was one in the distance it took them as far as their door in the martyr street 
they went up to their apartment she stood in front of the glass for the final view of herself in her glory so sometimes you know when we feel we are looking very uh, pretty or we are looking very handsome we keep on looking at ourselves in the mirror even when we return oh my god everyone was looking at me wow i'm so pretty you know so this is exactly what matilda was doing so she wanted to have a final look at her at her dress and her diamond necklace so what happened she suddenly uttered a cry her necklace was not around her neck so the diamond necklace was gone she turned towards her husband i have i have i no longer have madam frostier's necklace and they looked in the folds of the dress in the pockets everywhere but did not find it they looked at each other utterly cast down so both of them were utterly disappointed why because they could not find the diamond necklace that they had borrowed from madam frosty it will be necessary he said to write to your friend that you have broken the clasp of the necklace and that you will have it repaired this will give us time clasp means the buckle so whenever you wear a piece of jewelry around your neck it has a buckle kind of a thing to tie it so uh, mr lozel he tells his wife that you uh, write a letter to your friend saying that the clasp is broken or the buckle is broken so uh, give me some time i'll get it repaired and then i will give it to you so he thought that you know this is going to give us some time to uh, probably buy a, another diamond necklace she wrote as he directed at the end of a week they had lost all hope lozel declared we must take measures to replace this jewel they went from jeweler to jeweler seeking a necklace like the lost one in a shop they found a necklace of diamonds which seemed exactly the one they had borrowed it was value of 40000 francs Lozel possessed eighteen thousand francs, which his father had left for him. He borrowed the rest. So, Lozel only had eighteen thousand francs as a saving, and thirty-two thousand he took as a loan. When Madame Lozel took the jewel back to Madame Frostier, the latter said in a cold tone, "You should have returned them to me sooner, for I might have needed them." Madame Lozel. now knew the horrible life of bare necessity they had to pay this frightful debt and she would pay it they sent away the maid they changed their lodgings lodgings means house so now matilda and her husband now they told their maid that you don't have to come to our house only to you know uh, uh, they were looking for ways in which they could save maximum amount of money right so they told them made to go away and then they also changed their house she learned the heavy cares of a household the hateful work of kitchen she washed the dishes and the soiled le- uh, linen that means the clothing the husband worked evenings and nights this life lasted 10 years so it took them 10 years to repay the debt of 32000 francs at the end of 10 years they had repaid all their debts all their debts madam madame lozel now seemed old she had become a downtrodden woman of a poor household means very weak and very uh, you know not very pleasant to look at one day she was taking a walk she suddenly saw madame frostier should she speak to her yes certainly why not and now that she had paid she would tell her also now matilda thought that here is my friend madame frostier now let me tell her the reason why it, it took me around a week to return your necklace so she wanted to tell her friend that i had lost your diamond necklace and we had to purchase a new one that is why uh, and this is the entire story of my life past 10 years she approached her good morning jean so mrs frostier's first name was jean her friend uttered a cry of astonishment oh my poor matilda how have you you changed yes i have had some hard days 
and all because of you so she's again complaining <laughs> because of me how is that well i lost the diamond necklace that you loaned me i returned home i returned another to you exactly like it and it has taken us 10 years to pay for it so now matilda is telling her friend that in order to repay the loan of the new diamond necklace 10 years of my life have gone by madame Fro frostier took both her hands as she said oh my poor matilda the diamonds were false they were not worth more than 500 francs so look at the story coming to the point from where i started the story that sometimes just to look like the other person just to fit in to a group of people we go to any extent but sometimes it puts us into an unbearable pain sometimes it puts up uh, it uh, you know uh, makes us land into a big trouble and another you know thing that uh, another lesson that you would have learned in this chapter let's say you've borrowed something from someone Inst and by mistake you've lost it instead of hiding the fact let that person know because matilda did not tell her friend that i've lost the diamond necklace so what was the result of it she thought matilda thought that it was a real diamond necklace but it was a false diamond necklace but matilda and her husband for uh, suffered for 10 years so i just want to tell all of you first of all try and be happy with what you have it is always good to ask for more but not at the cost of being greedy there's no point if you are if you are asking something because there's a greed inside you that prayer will never be answered and do not complain about your life be happy first be happy be thankful with what you have and only then that thing will multiply in an unlimited manner Thank you so much.